Amen. I am on. I am on. It's our fourth day of January. Can you believe this? Fourth day of January, and we are entering into his courts with praise, thanking God of heaven and earth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> What a friend we have in Jesus. Yes. We go to him today in prayer. Let's worship the Lord. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Hallelujah. What a privilege to carry. This is one of my grandmother's favorite songs. Praise God. Jesus. In prayer, thank the Lord. Praise God. I am joined as an attendee. Kings Hill House of Prayer, good to see you this morning. Good to see you, Vanessa, on the call. Who else is out there? Come on, chime in, folks. Praise God. There we go. We'll admit. There we go. Welcome to the call. Welcome to the prayer call. Amy, good to see you today. We're entering in in thanksgiving and praise. What a friend we have in Jesus. Woo. Hallowed be thy name. Yes, Lord. In prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Alan Jackson, for that great song. Hey, let's just start the day off with some decrees. For the Lord is gracious. So just reach out your hand, extend, say, I am the head and not the tail. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Amen. So that's today. That's the, the pace that we're setting today. Thank you all for joining us on our fourth day. I'm grateful for you all. I'm just full of joy that people are joining on the call today. You know, we're doing this. My heart's full of gratitude for you being on the call because this is the fourth day, you know, and after the third day for me personally, I just got to share. It's been a little hard just keeping this going. And I thank you, God, for your help. I thank you, God, for the prayers of the saints. But we're dedicating these 21 days of the first of the year to Christ. We're getting shut in with him so we can go out into a lost and dying world and be the light. We're going to take communion after the call here today. So get your elements ready for that. I'm excited that we're in this fast. And why? Why are we entering into this fast? I think it's plain and simple. If we go to Isaiah 58, um, let me share that with you real quick. Isaiah 58 shouts that, is this not the fast that I chose? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bands and the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Amen. Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless into the house of God? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself, but to be present. Then your light will shine and you'll be like a watered garden and you will be called repairers of the breach the restorer of the streets in which to dwell. Well, this to me sounds like the second commandment, to love others as you love yourself. And so that's what we're going into today. We're going to study how to be wholehearted in God. We're praying about the deadly sins. We're going through the first seven days of the deadly sins. And today is apathy, lethargy, passivity, complacency. It's called slothfulness. It's the avoidance of physical or spiritual work. That's what it boils down to. Amen? And so as we take communion, when we repent of our sin, we believe that victory has been won in that, in that cause of Christ. Remember, we talked about how Melchizedek joined Abram 
in Genesis, and he, there, the land was cursed, and he brought the bread and the wine, and he removed the curse from the land in that time. So that's why we fast. This is the solution, actually, for leaning on God and living a life of God's wholeheartedness. You can't do evangelism and get out and, and, uh, and, and help the dying world if you don't cultivate wholeheartedness, which we're going to do today. I'm going to share that with you. So our basic scriptures today, the first one is Romans 8, and I wanted to read it from the new message because it's powerful. The solution is life on God's terms. It says here, with the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, that fateful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ's being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. <laughs> Amen, right? There has been a black cloud across America, but today we are Christ within us, the hope of glory. The new power is in operation. Get this, the spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleared the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. Wow, that's energizing, isn't it? That's powerful. And our goal in the 21 days is to know the biblical truth and walk in it. It's the being the living tabernacle I talked about yesterday. It's practicing patience. It's practicing peace. We're going to practice peace today. We're going to practice joy today. We're going to practice love in action. That's what Isaiah is talking about. It's the fast, not to just you know, not eat food and to be weary and put on sackcloth. That's the Old Testament. We're in the new covenant. We're going out as Christ. To, to bring truth to the dying world. Amen? Amen? So it says here in my book, if you have my book, by the way, you can get it and download it online, 21 Days of Fasting and Praise. I'm doing this free. This is a free lesson, a free 21-day challenge, if you will, to that, that we can set our hearts right before the Lord. And so our testimony here in the meditation starts out with, my testimony was and remains forever with you. From my birth in the manger to the sufferings and passion of Calvary to the resurrection and ascension into heaven, the whole matter of your salvation is sealed. Praise God. My story is not merely a memory, but alive in you, waiting to be revealed. That's the warrior bride arrives. Live your life from me, not toward me, not reaching out into heaven. Lord, come down. No, he's already within. I'm not out there somewhere, but I'm in you. Live your life from me, says the Lord. And when you're tempted and your flesh gets weak, remember, I am really alive in you. Let my glory disrupt your present darkness and erupt into a blazing fire to destroy strongholds, set the captives free. I can't do my mission without you, says the Lord. Walk with me. Stop struggling and practice peace. Let's just pause for a moment and close your eyes and breathe in the peace of God. That's awesome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To get you free from the law of sin and death, it cost my life on planet Earth. Yes, I defeated death, and with a great cost, you are now forever mine. The beauty of my holiness and love and death and resurrection oblige you to live a sinful life. Did you get that? We're obliged to live a sin, sin, sinless life, not a sinful life. I'm sorry. You're obliged to live a sinless life because the beauty of God and his love draws us. It's not that we're trying to avoid greed and pride and lust. It's that we're living from wholeheartedness, loving God, and the practice of that brings us close to him so we don't have to struggle with these things. He says, my peace, I left you. My peace I give you, my peace within you. Practicing the kingdom is practicing the peace of God. Thank you, Lord, for that meditation. Hallelujah. And today, as we practice that peace, there is a place for repentance. There was the God of the Old Testament who repented and fasted, like Isaiah we talked about. And there's Jesus who says, repent and be set free. And he baptized those in the Jordan, right? And so so baptism is still a thing of today. Repentance is still a thing today. So for today, our introspection today is apathy. As we think about apathy, complacency, avoidance, ask yourself these questions. 
How have you taken the grace of God in vain and been apathetic toward his word? How have you been indifferent or apathetic toward me and my word, the Lord says? In this culture, we have to be reformers. And so where have we failed to do what we should do in service for my people and in our culture and in, to bring justice to the world? And so we're going to take communion here shortly. But I wanted to know, I wanted to first uh, go into the prayer of repentance and share this with you. Repenting first of my own apathy, I want to be real with you all and get clean here. Part of this 21-day fast and praise is because I felt an apathy, an apathy toward the world, an apathy and indifferent toward the COVID stuff, all the things we see on TV. I got lethargic, I'll just be honest with you. And I was praying daily, going through the motions, but I felt I lost my cry. I felt I lost my tears. I forgot the last time I cried over the evil in the world. And I repented of my apathetic, cold heart. I cried out over the fact that I haven't cried over the oppressed in a long time. And as I, I, was, as I was thinking of that, I was reminded that we live in an evil, broken world. Unborn babies are murdered by their parents. COVID and the vaccine has killed so many already. And we see just on Monday Night Football, heart failures right out and open. And so we have to pray for that 24-year-old. Praise God that there's prayer on TV, on ESPN this morning. Hallelujah for that. The Lord's word is going forth. But refu refugees die at the hands of an unjust government while they pour into America unlawfully. Little girls are raped by sex traffickers across the world. The media's lies with false news. Yes, there is evil agenda in the world. And is there not a reason to cry out? Amen. The brokenhearted children concerned for evil liberal values in schools across America. And how many politicians abuse our system, voting for unjust laws, tearing down our own republic. Oh God, is there a need for prayer today? Evil is real and it necessitates a response from believers. Amen? We are humbling ourselves today. Are we not the ecclesia? Right, we are. We are the praying church. Removing the yoke, just like I said in, in, uh, in Isaiah, removing the yoke of apathy today from our midst. And so as I pray this prayer of repentance, I just want you to say, Lord, forgive us. Hear our prayer when I pause. Let's bow our hearts and pray for this repenting for apathy. We must be angry about evil, people. Christians of all people should be the most sensitive to evil because it is a direct affront to our God's righteousness, justice, and holiness. When God's image bearers are oppressed by evildoers, it's ultimately an attack on his character. The lackadaisical attitude toward evil that often characterizes the Christian as out of place and unacceptable. Lord, forgive us. Hear our prayer. We, we must never allow ourselves to grow apathetic towards the plight of the oppressed and evil in our world. This begs the question, how sensitive are we and are conscious to evil? How quick are you to become outraged at the unjust practices and moral laxity of our culture? When was the last time you wept over the oppressed? Lord, hear our prayer and forgive us. When was the last time we prayed for our present political leaders who are what they're doing to destroy our nation by devaluing our currency, allowing the dragon to feed on the belly of America. Lord, hear our prayer. The atrocities committed by those who oppose God and his kingdom of light drive us to the just king of our universe. And we pray that God would attune our conscience to his holiness and that we would take up the cause of the helpless. Cry out to God and ask him to bring justice to the oppressed and to deal with the oppressor. We pray that the wicked would turn toward God in repentance and enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb. Or if they don't, that they would be judged by God and suffer eternal punishment. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold office, who claim to represent America's constitution, but turn tongue in cheek and ravage our free republic. Man and women of God, be bold. Be the voice of Christ to a lost and dying world. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, forgive us. As we make our decree, I want you to take your bread out. 
This prayer I have for today is from Pastor Kevin Eakin of Eyes on Jesus. What a great man of God he is and a friend of Christ. And so we hold up our elements today. And as we celebrate Christ's victory today, we pray against lethargy. We make this formal decree over our world and over our lives. Say, Father God, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you, almighty God, creator of the universe, king of kings and Lord of lords. You are God alone. There is none like you, beside you in all the earth. You are perfect in everything you do. We acknowledge you. And as we step into 2023, teach us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow you. Forgive us of apathy, lethargy, and passivity. Teach us to submit our will and our ways to yours. I pray that each of us will not strive for what the world calls success, but that we would strive to love you and be holy as you alone are holy. I pray that we would rejoice and acknowledge you in all of our trials and tribulations. And instead of even asking you to change our circumstance, that we would find you in the middle of it, just the way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. Teach us to spend the rest of our life to love you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. And I pray we lean and learn to be content just being present with you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us in our lives. Take the bread. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, take the cup now. <clears throat> we pray, Father, we know all victories come through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. His blood cleanses us individually, and it cleanses our nation. Salvation is in the blood. Mercy flows from it. The blood of Christ empowers our prayers and decrees. Jesus is our every good and perfect gift. As we drink, we decree that God is rising over me, and you, and America, and his enemies shall be scattered. We remove apathy, complacency, and lethargy from our spirit. Wake us up to be your voice through the heart of America. Let the Lion of Judah praise and roar from shore to shore. Amen. Drink the cup. We thank you, Jesus, for the cleansing power of your risen and resurrected body. Amen, amen, and amen. Tomorrow, we're going to go in to the fifth day. I'm so excited. We're going to talk about, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, we're going to talk about <laughs> lust and how it impairs and makes us impure, even as a single and in, even as America. And so we're going to repent for that. I just want to share this online with you. To go ahead, share this message for your friends, your family, your relatives, your church. Let's get more people online. Let's spread the message of the gospel and be the good news today. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow for day five. Go out and rejoice and celebrate what the Lord has done in your life. Have a great day.